a hero in between the lines and a guilty suspect when things go wrong, this appears to be the cycle of treatment when it comes to many black athletes. Players often have big personalities on and off the court making them beloved to fans and hated by others. For Latrell Sprewell, this proved to be true as a Milwaukee native will become an NBA fan favorite for his play style, while at the same time a villain in the eyes of some due to one fateful day in December of 1997. Always being one to speak his mind, Sprewell was not accustomed to dispute with team personnel, having been in arguments that could have been worse in the past. Finishing his career with four all-star selections, an all-NBA first team selection, and even helping bring the eighth-seeded Knicks first team to do so to an NBA Finals all became overshadowed in the eyes of many due to the choke. With the career that began in 1992 and ended in 2005, the Trail Sprewell's career changed forever on a play in place where many are going merely to become a better basketball player practice. Born on September 8, 1970, Sprewell was born to Cocosta Fields and Pamela Sprewell, being their second of three children. Sprewell's childhood was rough with the family growing up with little money and his father often abusing the mother and all the children. After moving with his grandparents for years in Flint, Michigan, following his parents' splitting, Sprewell would begin his journey to the NBA truly as a standout star at Washington High School as a senior back in Milwaukee. The 6'5 guard would average 28 points and lead the team to a 24-2 record. Alas, still no real scholarship offers and playing at community college before joining the University of Alabama and playing alongside future NBA teammates Robert Horry and James Robinson. Taken 24th overall in the first round of the 1992 NBA Draft, Sprewell would immediately become a noteworthy player averaging 15 points and 4 rebounds a game for his rookie season. The guard would continue to grow by bettering his scoring to help bring the Warriors alongside Chris Webber back to the playoffs where they would lose to the Suns in the first round. After five seasons with the Warriors, Sprewell had become one of the best players bolstering three all-star appearances during this time span. During an ordinary practice on December the 1st, 1997, Sprewell and head coach PJ Carlismo got into an argument that would turn physical. With the individual success of Sprewell as a player came large expectations for the team being that they had not made the playoffs in years with their last trip ending in a first round exit. The team was anxious to get over the hump as well. During the summer of 1997, the team would hire PJ Carlismo and head coach to replace Rick Edelman after the team had finished the previous season with a losing record. While media remained lost as the depth of the issues brewing between Sprewell and Carlismo, one teammate in particular being Muggsy Bogues would admit years later to seeing the writings on the wall regarding the relationship early on. The team had been working to return to the playoffs and frustration had been brewing due to a 1-13 start according to teammates via the Sports Century documentary. After being told to make crisper passes by his coach, Sprewell was in Finnegate and both told his coach and warned him to leave him alone. As PJ Carlissimo approached him, Sprewell would go on to choke the coach for about 10 seconds threatening to kill him as he dragged him backwards before those in attendance broke it up. 20 minutes later after a shower, Sprewell would return to the court to continue his abuse against the coach, landing a devastating punch before the press would catch wind of the incident. One reporter famously asked Carlissimo, what happened to your neck? With the coach brushing him off, leading media to initially think not much of the incident. As talking continued, the story made its way to reporters in both Sprewell and Carlissimo in the immediate aftermath said nothing. Initially, Sprewell would be suspended for 10 games without pay as a result of the incident, before public opinion swayed the league to get tougher despite his apology. After the outcry, the Warriors would place a ban on Sprewell for 82 games, along with him forfeiting pay for the remainder of the season. Days later, Sprewell would speak his mind alongside Johnny Cochran and a host of others in a press conference to state his side. Information from a Los Angeles Times piece would reveal an excerpt from his speech as he stated, I didn't feel like I could go out and give them an apology through the media. I didn't think that would be the right thing to do. I just wanted to do it personally before I did it publicly. Sprewell would also claim racism had to do with the incident and following his ban would receive support from other star players along with those that played with him that spoke to him not being violent or irrational as the NBA had attempted to depict him. In a sit down with 60 minutes following the incident, Sprewell stated, there was just a buildup of anger and frustration and having it all bottled up and not being able to express myself. At that point, it just came to a head. This was in reference to what he believed to be verbal abuse coming from his coach. Teammates that were present such as Jason Cave and Todd Fuller admitted via Sports Century documentary that tensions were high and that both Carlissimo and Sprewell seemed angry. For Carlissimo, as a coach, 
it did not help that the team would finish the season 19 to 63, starting a span of consecutive losing seasons for the team. This led many to believe there were great issues and that the account of the teammates was likely true regarding relationships between the coach and the star. In a Vlad TV interview from 2021, Muggsy both spoke about the incident saying, I knew it was coming because there was a lot of things going on behind the scenes and that was the last straw. With the race-driven accusations, the public outcry to do something about this type of physical behavior and the support to boycott the All-Star game by guys like Charles Barkley and the NBA would increase their punishment, voiding the rest of Sprewell's $23.7 million contract, along with suspending him for 82 games. Due to the NBA system for these type of cases, Sprewell would appeal the case and win, having his punishment reduced to a 68 suspension, costing him roughly $6.4 million in lost salary instead. When the smoke cleared, the Warriors had no desire to take Sprewell back, instead trading him to the Knicks a month before the All-Star break in 1999, for John Starks, Chris Mills, and Terry Cummings. A fresh start for Sprewell, Nick fans were not enthused about the acquisition with Sprewell publicly promising that he was a new man and that he would give the city something to be proud about. As the 1999 playoffs began, the Knicks would just make the cut as the eighth seed during the lockout shortened season. In history-making fashion, Sprewell would help the team become the first eighth seed to make the finals before losing in five games to the San Antonio Spurs. Sprewell would go on to make the final All-Star team as a Nick before being traded in 2003 as a part of a four-team trade that would see him end up with the Minnesota Timberwolves. With rising star Kevin Garnett, who would win his only MVP award in 2004, and Sam Cassell, Sprewell was part of the highest scoring trio in the NBA at the time and the team would lock up the best record in the West at 58-24. The team would fight hard before losing to the eventual runner-up, the Los Angeles Lakers in 2004 Western Conference Finals. As the next season would begin, Sprewell's career would come to an abrupt end. Mere weeks after the season began on October 31st, 2004, the Timberwolves would offer him the guard a three-year $21 million contract. According to the Sports Century documentary on the incident, Sprewell declined to offer, stating, I've got my family to feed. This announcement was stunning to both the Timberwolves, who saw the deal as fair for the aging star, and the NBA world, where many were still shocked that Sprewell was reinstated to be able to play again. With no other offers due to his past, the trail Sprewell would effectively retire in the spring of 2005. Teams would express interest over the next few years in the veteran guard. However, no contract would ever be agreed upon as he walked away quietly from the game making little media noise in the process. Yahoo Sports will go on to get PJ Carlissimo's side of the story in an interview where he stated that Sprewell and I didn't have a great relationship before this, but it wasn't bad either. I was surprised that he did that in front of all of those people and very shocked to see him return to practice 20 minutes later. Despite accounts from multiple teammates of Sprewell's that the issue began with the coach telling Sprewell to throw crisper passes before being told by Sprewell that he wasn't in the mood and approaching anyways. The coach admits that two never quite patched things up and neither party speaks about the incident at length. For Carlissimo, as a coach, it did not help that the team would finish the season 19-63, and starting a span of consecutive losing seasons for the team. One can see that with all the accolades achieved that the incident remains a stain on the career of Sprewell. There were other instances during his suspension for the choking and even during him healing up from a broken hand in 2002 that saw the guard in legal trouble. However, nothing to this magnitude. The reputation of Sprewell was often not helped as his responses to these situations often made the media feel as if he didn't take it seriously. Famously, Sprewell would tell the Knicks when explaining his broken hand at the beginning of the 2002 season, if I was trying to hit somebody, I think I would. This came after Sprewell claimed to have fallen on his yacht, while the New York Post was making claims that the star had actually missed on a punch that landed on the wall, breaking his hand. Sprewell's lawsuit against the Post would be thrown out. He would be fined by the team for not making them aware of the injury prior to the season beginning and this would be the beginning of his last season with the Knicks before he began his final act with the Minnesota Timberwolves. The tenacity on defense, all-star selections, and being a savvy vet with a reputation for helping teams turn around are all things Latrell Sprewell proved to be capable of in his career. 
With a solid jump shot, a decent IQ, and teams with veterans around, his career gave him quality chances at a championship. Becoming a household name for his play, many fans will forever wonder what made Sprewell feel so inclined to jeopardize his career or that fateful December 1st incident. While Sprewell has returned to Madison Square Garden receiving praise for his contribution years later, the self-described kid from Milwaukee will forever be attached to the choke, remaining one of the longest suspensions in NBA history with a whirlwind of events in the aftermath that made him a think of a legend, whether you loved him or hated him.